So what are some keys to a successful clothing brand? Yeah, first of all, like I said, you got to be in it for the long run. You can't just drop something and people are not fucking with it and then you just, you give up. You got to figure out what people like. You got to figure out what people don't like. But, you know, it's just a matter of time. If you're ambitious, if you're good at what you're doing, I mean, the sky's the limit, man. You got to just keep going. What it do, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broad. Cast. I'm your host, Day. What a I, not a Y. Do not X Y. And today, I have a great one for y'all because we are joined by design and fashion enthusiast and owner of Stud Studios Clothing Brand. My dog Cam in the building. What it do? What's good? What's good, everybody? Man, I appreciate you for having me. Yeah, man. Thanks for stopping by. Um, we here. We making it happen. Um, and we're gonna get straight into it, man. Um, I'm really intrigued that you're here because we're gonna talk a little about fashion and design and whatnot, which mm -hmm. is a passion for yours, obviously. And I like speaking of it because I'm not a fashion person per se. Right. I wear what I wear. It is what it is. I, I like to call it uh, like um, sport stylish because mm -hmm. I've always been comfortable. A, yeah, comfortable. Being comfortable. Yeah, I've yeah. always been like an athlete. I've always worn sweatsuits and all that shit. So first and foremost, um, before we get into the actual clothing brand, mm -hmm. what got you into design and fashion in the first place? Well, um, so basically, even in uh, middle school, high school, um, I kind of I've always loved fashion. Um, I was even I sold shoes. I sold like vintage clothing in high school. Like I said, I even sold you know I even sold candy and food to everybody. Like I said, I was always engaged and wanted to be an entrepreneur. But I really didn't you know in high school they don't teach you how to be an entrepreneur. So I yeah. didn't really know how to you know do that. I just kind of did it because that's what I felt like doing. But at the same time, um, yeah, fashion is just I've always been into it. And I eventually I didn't know when I, I went to college too after high school, but I mm -hmm. didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. What you major in? I majored in communication. So okay. like I said, I kind of even did some of, you know, not I didn't do any podcasts or anything, but I kind of was took classes with like, you know, sound and audio and stuff okay. like that. Audio engineering um, and Yeah, all that. I was yeah. I was a weatherman in a class one okay. day, you know, shit like that, but um, multifaceted doing Yeah, 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 but things. I wasn't like I said that really I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do mm. until to be honest, like I said Instagram. Um my Instagram was, you know, has always been doing well. I've always had a passion for like marketing myself and putting myself out there. So basically, yeah, I just, you know, I realized that, you know, people can be profitable um, as far as selling clothes, but obviously that's not the important thing. But like I said, if you have a passion for something mm -hmm. and that's what really helps helps me out. So I, I really found what I wanted to do and I'm, I'm excited. So yeah. that's what I'm, I'm, I'm here for. And you're doing it, man. That opening yeah. statement, I want to dissect a few things. First and foremost, you're saying how you sold candy uh -huh. and yeah. was it like middle school, right? Not, well, actually high school, yeah. High, high school. school, middle school, yeah. high school, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it's crazy how like, Majority of like hustlers and entrepreneurs yep. sold candy exactly, and exactly. fucking in school at some point. I did it. Um, one of my friends who has his own business, he did it. And plus, you hear it. You hear the stories all the exactly. time. How people would go to even now. Yeah, yeah. yeah people would go to some some Sam principles. Club. Some principles not not found upon. Oh, they started they be, cracking down. Oh yeah, they cracking down. The principal, they like they started they like these down. Moments, drug dealers. I'm yeah. Like, hey. Yeah, they started cracking down. Uh, yeah. Shout out, shout out, Hefe, my boy Jeff. Yeah. I think he, I think they cracked down on him a few times. For real, they didn't crack down on me for two reasons. Because I always finesse. They never mm -hmm. knew what I was doing. Yeah. And two, it was before it really got. You know what I'm saying like like publicized like that. If exactly. you would. Um, but yeah, and then I guess they mad because you take money from the snack line and yeah. and at, at lunch and whatnot. They are. Um, I, so how did you even start that? Like, did you just it just hit you? One I mean, day? it just hit me because like I said, I mean, my uh, you know. You know, some families had uh, they had the Costco memberships exactly. or the Sam. I don't know if you heard of Sam's, Sam's Club. Club. Yeah, we got those. In okay, Maryland. so yeah. yeah, that was that was in Memphis. Like I said, that's where I'm from. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Moved to Charlotte about three years ago. So yeah, I mean, I got the plug with Costco. Yeah, just kind of put a little fifty dollars in there mm -hmm. and come make a little hundred fifty dollars out mm -hmm. the week. Or I mean, cause like I said, we we was in high school, so I mean yeah. that's. That's not a lot of money, but at the same time, I mean, that's a lot of money that, yeah, you know, yeah. in high school. So especially I mean, if you wasn't working. Was you working in high school? No, nah, no, nah, yeah, me neither. No, nah, I wasn't. So my yeah, I got it the same way. My grandfather, he had the Sam's Club membership. Uh -huh. My grandfather, yo, he he was in Sam's Club every day, right? Like for no reason. Yeah. You ever see that? They episode? got a lot of stuff. in Yeah, there. <laughs> bro, it's easy to do it. You ever see that episode of Bernie Mac when when he uh, got the Costco membership and was uh -huh. in there every day? Oh yeah, he was in that. <laughs> Every he was spending. <laughs> he, he had to get the spending. whole shed, bro. Yeah. That's exactly how my grandfather was. Yeah. And um, I still remember I was in sixth grade and he was just like, Hey, 
Um, here's a family pack of Skittles, uh-huh. you know, and, and it's different varieties. Mm-hmm. Take this to school, sell them for a dollar each. Yeah. Keep everything. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that was like the first, that was my first introduction to like that entrepreneurial Exactly. Like that, that gets you in the mindset because yeah. think about it. And that's why I feel like another reason why the principals, I don't know how the system set up, man, but it's mm-hmm. like school really didn't teach you how to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Man. They just taught you how to go to work, mm-hmm. go to school, wake up every day and, and you know, retire in 40, 50 years. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, it's a reason to that because yeah. you know it it's, it creates that separation. It does. If they put everybody on, then there will be no yeah. you know balance. Yeah, in that's the, in that's the, the way of the world. So yeah. yeah, you're right. It's the it's the economy, man. They just they gotta have people working. Exactly. That's the thing. There's so many people in the world. I mean, everybody don't have the entrepreneur mindset anyway. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's it's definitely a hard game to get into. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's always. But it, I feel like they should should still be able to teach it. Yeah. You know, oh, a, a little bit in high school. Definitely. At least give people that choice. Yeah. To take. Some type of entrepreneur class, a business class, something like and just real life, years. real life skills in general, like exactly. taxes. Like you ain't got to be an entrepreneur to know that you're gonna have to pay taxes. Exactly. <laughs> everybody got to everybody got to pay taxes, mm-hmm. man. Everybody except Trump. <laughs> right, right, right. Everybody got to pay taxes. Yeah, that's a whole nother skill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know let me let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> um. So the second part I want to dissect on that is how you mentioned right after high school, you went into college, didn't really know what you wanted to do per uh-huh. se. And this kind of spills off to what we were just saying. So um, like doing that, was that by choice or by force? Well, as far as, as far as what, just going to school or what? Yeah, like was that like a mindset off bucks? Like, okay, did you feel like if you didn't go to college out of high school, you would have been unsuccessful, I should say? Um, no, nah, I don't really feel like that. I feel like, just like you said, just the way we're, we was wired as yeah. kids, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like. If if you don't go to college, you're gonna especially being a black man in America, man. Yeah. If you don't if you don't go to college, you won't be this and that. But that's mm-hmm. the thing, I didn't even graduate college. Mm-hmm. I went to college for I did two years. Um, but like I said, I felt like I was wasting, you know, my money, my parents' yeah. money. Because I didn't you know, if you go to college you undeclared, it's like right. it don't even you know, you know, what are you there for? You know what I'm saying? Right. So I got my credits, I can always go back and I might eventually go back to get, you know, get more knowledge in business and stuff yeah. like that. But I finally found that, you know, I can make money doing you know what I'm doing now, and I am. So that's what I. That's why I got into it. Yeah, I honestly I can say here humbly that I know for a fact I would have not gone to college mm-hmm. if I didn't have a scholarship uh, right. for football. I mm-hmm. played football in school. Like I okay. know for a fact I wouldn't I didn't have. Know that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, I was all right. You okay. know what I'm saying? Free safety, whacking shit across the middle. Okay, okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, like if I know, like I would not have gone. So like um, and where I'm at now, I can say came from that degree that I got, but. I didn't. I remember getting my college degree and not feeling shit. Right. Because I'm like, all right, I know a million people that have a degree uh-huh. and still doing something that someone that didn't. Yeah, and go that's to another thing, bro. Going. You got people getting a, a good degree mm-hmm. and some people not even using it. Exactly. You know? And that's not a. It's not a problem too because you can always you can always use it eventually. But at right. the same time, it's like if you're gonna spend all that money, especially when you graduate, if you got student loans, yeah, you gotta pay those loans as soon as you graduate. So it's like. I mean, so, what you gonna do? You gotta get into the game. You gotta. It's a hamster wheel. Yeah. So you you gotta get. You gotta find a side hustle. You gotta find a real job. Yeah. So you people, don't want to get caught into it. Nah. People be asking me, you going to get your master's? I'm like, if I get a job that pays for it, exactly. Hell yeah, I'm not coming out my pocket. It's, for it's no expensive. Yeah, find bro. them scholarships. Find them grants. So mm-hmm. it's ways and opportunities for it, but it's definitely a hard, you know, a hard thing to come by. Yeah. And the third part that I wanted to dissect mm-hmm. um, is the Instagram part. How you said you always had like a mm-hmm. natural uh, feel and flow for marketing exactly. on social media and whatnot. Yeah. And your social and your Instagram is doing it does good. It's, yeah, it does it's good. Doing good and whatnot. Mm-hmm. You have 13k followers yeah, and about whatnot. 13. So, um, like first and foremost, are those? I gotta ask. I know the answer, but I gotta ask. Yeah. Out of those thirteen thousand followers, are those real natural followers? Oh yeah, of course. Cause like I said, I had my Instagram since maybe seventh grade. Okay. So it, it's natural. You, I see uh, people nowadays. Um, they start an Instagram, and it's just really the consistency part. Yes. And I've been, I ain't gonna lie, I've been real busy. Um, so it's like, even if I was consistent, like mm-hmm. every day posting reels and stuff mm-hmm. like that, my my, my Instagram could have been a hundred k. I see yeah. a friend do it. His followers, he had like maybe two thousand on Instagram uh, about a year ago. Now he's up a hundred k. But you know, like he's passed me, and that's cool. I respect yeah. him. So yeah. it's like, but you want to know? Why, you want to know why it's consistency? So that's just like I said. I had my Instagram for a long time. Mm-hmm. So t- 
to be honest, man, humbly, I should have way over, you know, yeah. 13,000 followers because I had it for so long. Right. I've been in the fashion. I've been into, you know, posting these videos and, and getting myself out there. So, but like I said, definitely organic, organic yeah. followers. Yeah. The consistency, that's really the only yeah, yeah. thing it takes. Now, if you're exactly. consistently posting bullshit, then of course. Oh, yeah. You know Supposed to bullshit, but, it ain't no yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's 100%. I, um, I noticed that. Cause I, I, my goal for this month was to get to 2000. Cause I recently mm -hmm. only had like 1200, probably a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I set up the studio, started doing the podcast, posting every day. Right. And just like that, I'm at 1900. Exactly. The algorithm definitely going to fuck with Goes you. Goes crazy. Yeah. I missed one week cause mm -hmm. I was supposed to record an episode last week, but shorty bluff, but whatever. Yeah. So I missed one week and like, it just halted. I yeah. mean, every day I'm getting 40, 50, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I missed one week and I'm like, damn, that shit is crazy. Like Instagram got posted. so many people on there. Yeah. So it's like, that's why even when you post a pic, you got, I got 13,000 followers, right? Mm -hmm. But when I post a pic, it's not like they showing that pic to all 13,000 exactly. people. So that's the thing about the algorithm. They got to see who's posting. They got to see who's on there viewing. So it's a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. man. It definitely is. View duration. It takes all that into consideration. Exactly. It's crazy. But the, like I said, consistency though, that's the main key. Yeah. And you know, if you if you probably if you providing value to some to somebody, I mean that's also another key, but you gotta keep going. Provide a value for sure. One of three things, if not two of three things, maybe all three of three things. Mm -hmm. Education, information, and entertainment. Oh yeah, always. Yeah, if you can people gonna respect it. Mm -hmm. If you can provide a good quality of at least one of those three, but it's better for the algorithm to provide at least two. Yeah. But if, and you, if you got all three, you go. Yeah. Yeah. You on point if you can do all three with like that too. Like, and that's the capture. I, I just want to give out, we, we just, you know what I'm saying, helping out the creative mm -hmm. contents out there or content creators who want to, you know what I'm saying, do whatever they want. Yeah. But getting that attention like that, because mm -hmm. TikTok, you can see something in 10 video, 10 seconds and know what it is. Of course. So, like, if you, whatever you do, as far as those two or the three, you have to capture the attention like that. ASAP. That's what I've learned. TikTok like, too, you got so many people on yeah. there. Even my TikTok, my brand page, I got like 15,000 followers. But when you post a video, mm -hmm. if it's not given, and that's what I noticed too, sometimes I post a video of showing my clothes, like mm -hmm. it's my shirt. Yeah. If I show the video, sometimes it give me 200 views, right? Mm -hmm. Just because I'm trying to sell something. Yeah. But if I go on TikTok and trying to help people that, okay, this is how you start your brand, I have videos that do 100,000 views. Going crazy. So you know what I'm saying? It's just mm -hmm. if you're providing somebody with some type of knowledge that definitely helps out the videos too. yeah and then it's yeah. like use that knowledge to sell of course the product in exactly. a way that's what i started realizing because the whole I, marketing loop exactly because I, I when i first did i would just be like i would post an hey y'all subscribe to this joint watch mm -hmm. this joint da, da, da. i don't even ask for that on my joints now like i'll just post a very you know uh a very intriguing conversation. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, that'll make them dig deeper to the same form of content. Let me mm -hmm. go to this page and look at the same type of short videos with all these right. contents. Because it's like when you tell people, uh, subscribe to here, subscribe, uh, why am I subscribing? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So you got to show them something that, you know, sparks their interest. You exactly. Know? So that's the main thing. Yep. And like, and like we said before we started recording, I forgot where I saw this at, but mm -hmm. it was a study that said as far as like brands or any type of businesses, when you're producing content, it takes the viewer an average of like seven to ten times to see content yeah. before they dig into the actual brand of business. Exactly. Sparks of interest. Is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you got to stay on point with that. All right, yeah. So um, Memphis, man. Coming mm -hmm. up in Memphis, you've been out here in Charlotte for three years now? Yeah, three years. And how old are you? I'm 25 now. I just turned 25 last week. Okay. Yep. Happy belated. I appreciate you. Um, okay. So, oh, is that, did I see you last week? Was that in the city? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw me in the city. Oh, so yeah, you, was, was you was turning up the whole... Oh, yeah. I was okay, turning up. I went, to, I went to Atlanta... For my birthday, but like I said, I came back in the city. I still turned up. Um, okay. But yeah, like I'll be back and forth from Atlanta sometimes. So, um, yeah. Atlanta and Charlotte, four hours apart. Yeah. We're going to get to Memphis. Atlanta and Charlotte, four hours mm -hmm. apart. And, you know, it's a lot of correlations between the two. Right. You lived in Atlanta at one point, right? Yeah, for about a year and a half. What's yeah. the difference? Uh, what's the difference as far as the scene and the vibe as mm -hmm. far as Atlanta and Charlotte? Yeah, first of all, I feel like traffic. So, I mean, you got mm. traffic in, in Charlotte sometimes. This traffic but, ain't shit but yeah. compared to other spots. But Atlanta, it's like everywhere you go, man, it take an hour. Mm. <laughs> everywhere you go, it take an hour, man. Plus Atlanta, Atlanta's bigger, too, Yeah, right? it's, a, it's much bigger, um, yeah. saturated. Um, I like Atlanta, but at the same time, I like Charlotte better. You just got more freedom to do what you want to do. Yeah. Atlanta, sometimes they just, sometimes they doing the most out there. But I still respect the city. Um, it's a lot of you know, it's a lot of black love out there, a lot of uh, a lot of black money out there. Mm -hmm. So I definitely respect it. Um, but like I said, Charlotte's definitely a, a smooth city. You got you got the mounts, um, you know, not too not too far away. You got yeah. the beach. So Charlotte, I, I love Charlotte, man. I love yeah, it. me too. I, yeah. So I ain't I ain't going back. Exactly. You know what I'm saying I'm this is my officially it's officially been two years being out here, and for a half a second I 
I contemplated going back to Maryland for half a second uh -huh. because uh, my brother, who was my roommate, he moved back. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, damn, like the bills just literally doubled up. Cause, exactly. Because, you know, yeah. we, we were splitting rent. So it was, oh, not even splitting rent. He was paying a good portion of it. Anything uh -huh. helps. You know what I'm saying? Of course, yeah. You already know how that is. So I'm like, damn, I'm ready to take the load of all the bills now. I'm mm -hmm. like, shit, do I got to go back home? Exactly. You got to make a decision, a yeah. pimp decision. Yeah, bro. <laughs> we call it. Yeah, and, and you got to make yeah. it like that, too. So my, I was talking to my mom's. And she was like, what you going to do? I yeah. sent her a clip of uh, from Wolf of Wall Street. He was like, you know what? Mm. I'm not fucking leaving. <laughs> I sent her that shit. And I'm like, nah, I ain't fucking leaving. We're going to make it happen one way or another. Nigga left like three days later. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, 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 right. He still dipped on him. That's a wild It was crazy. Road. I used to stay in Maryland too, man, for yeah. uh, Edgewater. You, you familiar with that? Yeah, that's uh, Edgewater. Edgewater, Maryland, yeah. Is that um, Anne Arundel County? It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah, I used yeah, to stay yeah, there yeah. for like. Uh, maybe like a year and a half. I was with I was with my girlfriend, whatever. Then you know this shit didn't work out. Fuck you it. stayed with her? Yeah, yeah. We stayed okay, with so y'all stayed with each other yeah, in Edgewater, yeah. Maryland. Yeah. Is she from Maryland? No, she's not from Maryland. She's from Tennessee. How'd y'all end up in Edgewater, Maryland? So basically, we went to school together okay. in Tennessee. Okay. And so we just kind of um yeah we just kind of moved out there. So I mean of all places, y'all y'all picked Edgewater, Maryland on the map. I mean that's where we just that's how we just kind of graduate graduated over there too. I got okay. family over there too in DC. Okay. In the DMV area, so that's just how we were. Like I said, but it didn't work out. But it's all good. That was like a um but like I said, I, yeah, I've been in Atlanta, Edgewater, mm -hmm. Maryland. Shit, DC, mm -hmm. uh, Atlanta. Well, yeah. I think I already said Atlanta. But, yeah. And then, like I said, now, now Charlotte. And I, I feel like I found a home here. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Me too. Me yeah. too. So coming up in Memphis, uh, what mm -hmm. was that like? Well, Memphis, like I said, it is a, it is a like a, you know, it's a nice city. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's a lot, it's a lot of stuff going on there too. Yeah. Um, um, I was raised in the suburbs. Though. I had a two parent mm -hmm. home, so they kind of did teach me the, the fundamentals and stuff like that, the basic yeah. stuff. So. I definitely love it, but at the same time, I'm not really interested in going back unless I'm visiting, you know, visiting my people. Yeah. Um, it's not, you know, it's not much to do there. But like I said, I had to, you know, come to Charlotte and just levitate. So that's right. what I did. Yeah, yeah. Leaving leaving the hometown is definitely important. Same thing with yeah. me. I could have stayed home and turned up. Of course. It was like a company that wanted me to be like their podcaster and whatnot. Shout mm -hmm. out to Creative House DMV. But mm -hmm. I just felt like it was just better for me to step out of that comfort zone yeah. and kind of start from do scratch. Do Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't really, I've never been to Memphis. I've never been to Tennessee in general. I mm -hmm. want to go to Nashville. I'll probably go sometime this fall. I heard yeah. Nashville is a, is a it nice ain't must. Ride. It ain't much to do. I mean, well, it's, it's much to do in Nashville. I'm mm -hmm. talking about Memphis. I mean, you got yeah. you got Bill Street, um, one of the popular streets there. You got, the Grizzlies are doing well now too, so you mm -hmm. can go to a basketball game. But it's not really much to do there, man. Yeah. It's not. It's not at all. Yeah, all I know about is Memphis, honestly, the yeah. only perception I have from Memphis is hustle and flow. Yeah, and the music. The music yeah, game. Everybody, of course. it's a lot of music artists right now doing the, you know, doing the big right now. Money Bad Yo. I, I would so say let's... Memphis is on top. Memphis, I oh, think yeah. Memphis and Michigan. Even the girls, they, they coming yeah. up too with the music. Yeah, yeah. I think just, in, yeah, right, the girls. I yeah. think Memphis is number one right now yeah, as far music, as the they music definitely, And a lot of people don't even know that. They just listen to the artists, but they don't right. even know where they're from, but a lot of artists, even in the, like even the radio here in Charlotte, it's majority Memphis artists that yeah. be on the radio. I'll be like, okay, and y'all y'all not even showing love to y'all own rappers right. like Charlotte, but it's like right. I hear Memphis. I hear more Memphis rappers. I don't hear. I don't hear no the baby on the radio. Mm. <laughs> I'll be hearing straight wow. money bag yo yeah. and the girls and stuff like that. So uh, finesse, um, Pooh when he was free, exactly. Glorilla, um, R.I.P. Dolph, of course. All type of people in there, yeah. Um, what's what's uh, what's dude that be with Dolph? Um, he. Key Glock. Key Glock. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, Memphis is definitely number one now that I think about it. Yeah. You said the baby. I will say this about the baby. He uh -huh. I'ma call it what it is. He's been kind of falling off a little yeah, bit. He is. But he hey, he brought himself back with that shake song. Oh yeah, yeah. Cause they definitely going crazy to that in the club. That <laughs> shit goes and TikTok, everything that they've yeah, been doing. They've been making that viral shit, videos. That shit goes stupid. Yeah, the TikTok. If uh -huh. you can I think that's I mean, I'm pretty sure that was one of the directions he went. Like, okay, let me get some folks to turn up and make some content uh -huh. to it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what Uzi did with I Wanna yeah. Rock. I think he took like a similar approach that right. Uzi took with I Wanna Rock with Shake Some. Mm -hmm. um, since you mentioned the uh, Gri Grizzlies, are you a Grizzlies fan? I mean, I feel like I'm not a fan of them, but at the same time, they definitely on my top five team list. Yeah. And Maybe they, even top three. Top and, three for sure. And since they turn it up and that's back home, like you mm -hmm. you kind of be like, okay, yeah, that's Yeah, like up. I said, I can't I can't wait till one day I can go back home with my close friends, man. We go sit courtside at the game. Mm -hmm. Probably, I don't know, maybe Lakers versus Grizzlies. Yeah. So you know how that you know how yeah, that shit yeah, is. Yeah. But I feel like, yeah, I want to do that one day, man, and go back to the city and enjoy enjoy my people, man. So then we got to talk about it, man. Your boy, Ja, Ja Moran, since we speaking on Grizzlies. Yeah. Um, do you think he wilding or you think it's just a it's just a phase of a twenty four year old? 
I think it's a little bit of both. Mm. I think it's a little bit of both. Because for one, like I said, you're making all that money and you already got somebody already told you about it one time when you yeah. pulled the, you know, pull the strap out, whatever. You know, one time is cool, but it's like, you know, yeah. fool me once, cool, fool me twice, you're a damn fool. It's like and I mean, like, and I don't like know. bro was itching the Yeah. It was too much. But one thing too, it's a really about the I feel like it's really about the dude that be recording to on the live. Mm. You know, it's like you know your man's, you know, got a, mm -hmm. you know, making all these millions of dollars. You know, you're not supposed to be outside like this. So, you know, why yeah. is you recording? Why you recording? know what I'm saying? And, and a lot of people say that. I kind of, mm -hmm. I, I get that. I kind of agree, but I'm more so on the right. side of, all right, bro, you saw he was on live. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. was vibing to his live for a minute. That's on him too, yeah. God damn. Like, you gotta take turn some accountability. Up the, you can turn up the <laughs> NBA without pulling out the you, strap. What? You know what I'm saying? Like, just enjoy that and shit. And that's why I say it once. But twice, oh twice. my god, god damn! You got comments. You got comments. People saying like, okay, what is wrong with what John ja Moran did? Mm -hmm. Guns are legal where he was at. Guns being legal ain't the problem. Yeah, it's you cool. Well, saying? first off, it's it's a code of conduct. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Policy. You still got a job. You still got yeah. people that you work for. So yeah. at the same time, you still have to abide by those rules, just like any other job. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I'm. I, I agree, bro. People were sounding stupid as fuck when they were saying, yeah. "Yo, guns are legal." Okay, <laughs> we have a freedom of speech, but are you gonna go in and right. work? And drop all top type of f bombs, and I'm not talking about fuck. Yeah. Drop all type of f bombs and say this and that exactly. to your boss. Nah. It's, it's legal, right? So why won't you do it? Like what the fuck? Because <laughs> it's not stupid? smart, yeah, yeah bro. Just because it's legal, don't mean it's allowed. You people, know? Yeah, people were tripping with that. So, yeah. um, yeah, I think it's 24. I'm 28 now. Yeah. So 24, 23. Yeah. I mean, I I I was a little more mature because my grandparents raised me, so. Always had an older soul. Always saw shit early. Plus, I jumped off the porch. Not like that as far as the streets, but uh -huh. as far as doing shit, I jumped off the porch early as fuck. Right. Like, I, I don't smoke no more, but I was smoking weed at like 12, 13. Mm. Damn. Yeah, bro. Like, <laughs> I had sex young as fuck. Like, yeah. I was drinking right. like high school. Like, I did a lot of shit early and got right. it out the way that people like would do like later on. Exactly. So, like, I'd slow down quickly mm -hmm. because of that. But I think Ja, you know, him being a professional athlete... You know how it is with high school and college athletes that know they're going to the league. Yeah. They ain't got no time to do that type of they shit. Don't, they don't. They don't have it. Yeah, they don't have the training. The only training they got is basketball. Exactly. Especially NBA, that's what you do. You eat, sleep, eat, sleep, basketball. And high school and college is even worse. NBA a professional, you're a little on your own more. But mm -hmm. high school and college, he's probably always under the microscope from his coach, his trainers, and his parents and scouts. So right. he, he ain't really have. I'm pretty sure he didn't party in high school and college. Probably not. He got to the NBA. Yeah, it was yeah, some slight, but not yeah. like really like that. He got to because he's number two overall draft pick. Exactly. You're not ready to be out here wild. Very, out. A very great player. Very great player. Yeah, man. absolutely. So by the time he got to the league, you know what I'm saying? The leash just probably got let loose a little bit and he was able to mm -hmm. do, you know, whatever he want without any type of supervision. He was yeah. like, shit, I'm kind of reliving my, my childhood or my teenage, you yeah. know, time. Especially right landing all that money. Yeah. You can do like, whatever the Some fuck people you don't want. really know. Yeah. Some people don't know what to do with all that money. Yeah. So he just. Yeah, there's he, no there's no gate, there's no blockage. So it was yeah. like whatever the fuck I want to do. I feel like he'll get there though. You know, yeah, he'll, yeah. he'll, he'll, get he'll there. be good. This he's will be a great basketball player. He's still a great person, but yeah. at the same time, he just he made yeah. made a couple mistakes. And that's yeah. the thing, it's not a bad mistake. It's just a matter of fact, it's just as far as repeating the mistake. Right. That's the only issue. Right. He could have so, shot somebody. Exactly. Yeah, it's, no it's, accident. You never yeah, know. It's definitely not that bad. But yeah. he, he just gotta we all and that's why the NBA don't yeah, they don't they don't really want that. One day going on, cause like I said, accidents mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. So what a, you know, live video. Yeah. Gun go off. I mean, that's worst case scenario. But right. I'm just saying, but it's happened. Know, stuff happens. Yeah. It, it has happened. For sure. Um, it's just a mistake you got paid for. Literally, it's gonna be a very expensive mistake. But yeah, he'll be good. Looking back at it, when he like twenty eight my age, he'll be like, yeah, I was geeking. But yeah, for sure, he <laughs> definitely, he definitely realized. Yeah. Do you fuck with his shoes? Uh, his actual. To be honest. Sneakers? To be honest, I I mean I like them. They all right. Yeah. They are. Right. I would rock them. That's why I actually do need some more, more basketball shoes. Like I said, I played basketball in high school. Mm. Really wasn't my passion. I was, you know, I was good at it. Um, but like I said, I do yeah, I need to get back out there, man, on the court. You see, you at the Y, right? So we gotta get at the Y. Get yeah. a little basketball. I'm at on, I'm man. at the Dowd, which uh -huh. is the holy mecca oh, yeah. of basketball here in Charlotte. The view of the city is crazy for oh, on the rooftop. Yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, Charlotte is a beautiful I city, go, man. It is, it yeah. is. Yeah, I go up on the rooftop every Matter day. Matter of fact, I gotta give me a membership out there, ASAP. Yeah. Even though it's not far, I, I stay on the south side, but I mean, it's I probably like you, 20 minutes. And I could get you in there for free. Yeah. Not every single time, but right, for right, like right. a good amount of times. If you just want to come check it out for like a month or so, I'll get you in there. For sure, for sure. I got to check it out. Yeah. And if you listen and don't think it's the same for you, I don't want anybody to hit me <laughs> no. up being like, yo, get me in there. Nah, nah it's, it's too much. Too yeah. Much. <laughs> I'm talking to my mans right now. But um, okay, so you hoop. Uh, how tall are you? 
Uh, six four, six four. What what you play? One two. I play I played the so basically my eleventh grade year I was a little bit more taller than everybody mm -hmm. so they kind of had me at, at like the four okay but I, when I went to twelfth grade I kind of uh, I moved to Illinois which is Peoria which is my like hometown so I was born in Peoria but I moved to Memphis when I was two years old so basically okay. I'm still from Memphis yeah but yeah like I said anyway twelfth grade they had me playing the point guard. Cause mm -hmm. I went to it's called Central High School in St. Peoria, Illinois. Okay, they and sound like they nice. Yeah, yeah, that's where they um that's where Sean Livingston went. Okay, and he's actually yeah Sean Livingston is a you know very close family friend of mine, and they had him playing one, so they kind of said I kind of had similar attributes as him. Yeah, so they had me playing the uh, the point guard you know at, at Central because even people were more taller than me there. Yeah, six seven six eight. Yeah, so I had to, you know me being six four. A little shorter in basketball terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had me run a one-two guard. Yeah, nice. Ain't that part of Illinois where uh, Richard Pryor from? Uh, I think so. I'm not pretty. I can't. You can't quote me on it. It might be in that. Yeah, it might be in that area. Peoria. You got yeah. Bloomington an hour away at the bottom. You got Chicago at the top a little bit, like an hour away from yeah. Peoria. I think that's it's, it sounds familiar. A lot of great yeah. comedians. Um, There's a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people from Peoria. A lot of yeah. people from that city. That's what's up. Um, yeah. so. Um, like you said before, as far as uh, you need to get some more basketball shoes. So, um, since you're you know an enthusiast of design and fashion, how mm -hmm. do you feel of basketball shoes yeah. being used outside of the court in your actual casual attire? Well, um, it just depends on what kind of shoe. Mm -hmm. Cause like if you take the if you take the Kobe lows, I don't know what you, I don't know what model they are, but if you mm -hmm. take them. Like the you know them, them green snake the Grin skin the Grinch the Kobe's yeah, yeah yeah I don't know if those like the sixes or whatever but people can put a fit together yeah. with them yeah and and even if you hoop on them man them shoes are comfortable yeah so I, but sometimes like but if you if it's like a high top um a high top basketball shoe I don't really you probably ain't ro rocking no outfit with them unless they right. sweatpants like so you are comfortable yeah. I'm talking about like, like something like decent like with jeans and yeah shit. yeah yeah um what low, low tops if you're gonna do anything with a low tops always. yeah what what Dom say Dom Kennedy he said we don't mm -hmm. wear LeBrons to the club them shits <laughs> something like that don't do that yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, wear yeah, the LeBrons yeah. them, them motherfuckers fat yeah. so it's like so you who, can't really just be doing that so who what are some of your favorite yeah. basketball shoes that you can wear outside of basketball like mm -hmm. to the club and whatnot I feel like I don't really have any that I do but if I did like I said those Kobe's mm -hmm. those uh Grinch those Grinch shoes you yeah. got who else shoes real nice what about what about um the goat Mike Mike yeah yeah always always definitely some J's but like mm -hmm. I said even I feel like even the new J's that come out right now they're not comfortable enough to hoop in yeah. so I don't really even count those as basketball shoes mm. I always count those as just like like I said lifestyle shoes more so anyway. fashion shoes yeah I always go to club that's why I always I only got ones now yeah. I always like I said I used to sell shoes in school too mm -hmm. I've always had a lot of a lot of Jordans so a lot of Jordans that's that's what I'm saying I don't even know why I didn't think about that but I just didn't even think as those that's as so, basketball shoes. Right, right, exactly. right. Yeah. How'd you get them? Did you work at like a Foot Locker or something? So, no, I didn't work at any Foot Locker or nothing like that. Um, like I said, I just kind of, like I said, from that money, I'm yeah, hustling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get, selling the clothes, selling the shoes. Mm -hmm. And just like I said, putting the, put in a rotation. You trade the shoes, you trade the... You trade it up, so that's how that's how kind of how I made my money and reinvest it and make it like that. Yep, flipping and whatnot. Yeah, I, I, I used to work at Foot Locker, mm -hmm. and I used to spank them. Right. Oh man, I used to spank them. That's so, why, that's why I'm surprised I never got like a uh, like a shoe or like a retailing job. Job, yeah, and, yeah. and you could have did like part time, like exactly once a week, I and really, still because you got the, you plugged in too. You could have got plugged Way in, but plugged I, I really in. never thought about it like that. Bro, I was so plugged in yeah. for a couple reasons. One, three times a year, Foot Locker, Champs, and Foot Action gets 50% off discount. Talking about the, the employees or just yeah, anything? employees. So okay. regular discount, I think it's 30% yeah. or 25, something around there. But three times a year, employees get 50%. Family can use it too, but you just have to be there with them. Right. So that's three times a year, you get 50%. Um, and then on top of that, I was the I worked at Foot Locker for two years. One year I was on the floor, sales mm -hmm. associate. The second year I was in the back as stock inventory manager. Okay. So I'm the first to see everything we get. I'm the yeah. first to look at the list of everything we get. I'm the first to open up the Don't boxes. Try to like pick out some maybe Bro, before I'm the drop. Picking out shit easily. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm telling my manager, hey, put me down. And then it's it goes by list of uh, seniority as far as what you as far as who gets what first. How long you been there? Yeah. Well, yeah, that and your position. So mm -hmm. store managers get first pick, assistant managers get second pick, and uh -huh. then inventory manager get third. Yeah. So I was, and then like it may be times where they're like, hey, they're only letting us get three shoes or reserve three shoes. So mm -hmm. I was always guaranteed. Right. And, um, but like with the 50%, I used to spank them and they hated me because it, yeah. Uh, Cause you can only use it. You couldn't use it on forces, New Jordans, Tim's, or Nike boots, anything good. Right. So I would use the 50%. 
on like there's still some nice sneakers out there too that's yeah. like you know gotta be the best ones of course especially with that sale come on now but i was still I, I was still frequently get the good exactly. shit exactly here's how i would do so it I would, I would i would i really shouldn't even be saying this <laughs> i would use the 50 percent on a shoe that's of similar price right I would return it to a different Foot Locker without wow. a receipt. Yeah. And they would give me a gift card of stored yeah. credit. Then I would go back and buy the pair of J's. And hey, Foot Locker, hey, man, y'all got to watch out for this, man. Yeah, bro, they <laughs> hated me, bro. It's too late now, man. He, yeah. The contract is done, man. Yeah, he, he done. The, so the deal is done. Good. The cake is baked. Yeah. They be like, yo, you work here. Why you keep doing this? I'm like, man, I ain't it's doing nothing with. illegal. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I am, lock me up. But yeah. run me my shit. That's another thing, too, man. I don't see how people, though, those resellers, I still don't see how they do it. The bots and all this shit. Mm. But I feel like technology, though, that's what I'm saying. They be on that. They be on their computer shit. I don't know how they do it, but... Yeah, it's fucked up now. Yeah. The shoe game is completely fucked up now. That's why I said I never even got into that. I just got into the simple stuff. That's why yeah. in school, it was just... It was an easy transaction. You yeah. trade, or you selling, or you buying. It's, right. like, it's none yeah. of that, it's none of that was. extra stuff. Yeah. We had like Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. um, it was called like DMV Shoe Exchange. Right. Where like people would just be on there all day exchanging shit, exactly. selling shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's simple. Like Especially when yeah. you know the people. Because like, even from retailers, you don't know if it's real or fake nowadays. Exactly. Man, they got those... They got those manufacturers that make fake shoes that look exactly like exactly. the real ones, but it's yeah. like you don't want to you don't want to fuck up. You don't want to fuck up and get the wrong shit. And then people now will be so pressed to have the shoe that mm -hmm. they will like geek out just to get the fake joints. Oh yeah, they be running out, man. They be running out <laughs> people and shit like that. It's just crazy. to get the fake joints. Um, but since we're talking about shoe releases mm -hmm. and J's and whatnot, um, I think Jordan had you know the biggest impact as far as like shoes being released because you know mm -hmm. people was getting killed about. Oh, yeah. Especially them Concords in 2011. That was like the, I think that was the start of mm -hmm. like the just frenzy of shoe resale and shoe release. Them Concords, and I think it was 2011, 2012, somewhere right. around there. Man, people were going crazy. It was bodies getting caught left and right back home over them shits. I mm -hmm. know it was around the globe and whatnot. But I want to I wanna ask you this. I saw an interview with Penny Hardaway. Um, and for those who don't know, Penny Hardaway got the air pennies, ones, twos, dopes. Well, not dopes. Uh, phone, phone posits. We call yeah. them dopes. Some of the best shoes. Some of the best hot top shoes out there. Exactly. Yeah. I want to ask you this. It was an interview with him with mm -hmm. uh, a sneaker uh, channel or whatnot, and he was saying that he feels he could compete with Jordans as far as shoe uh -huh. top to bottom. Do you think Penny Hardaway shoes could compete with Jordans? To be honest, nah. Yeah. Just just the way just the way the hype was around Michael Jordan. Even I I feel like I think what Michael Jordan's dropping a not him personally, but I think Hulu or something they drop like a documentary. Or actually it's a movie. It's yeah, a movie it already with dropped. His, yeah, with his shoes and stuff like that. I feel like just the impact he had with it was crazy. Penny yeah. was a Penny was a great player. You know, Penny Penny coming from Memphis too. Penny Hardaway's mm -hmm. from Memphis. I don't yeah. know if you know that or not. Even he had a basketball team I played on there for like maybe, you know, a, a few months or something during okay. the summer. So Penny came to uh, you know, he came to our graduation, our high school graduation. Damn, that's hard. Yeah, so Penny Hardaway, I got a lot of respect for him. Um, but the shoe game, he got some amazing shoes. But Michael Jordan, I feel like he'll always have the best sneaker deal for one. Mm -hmm. And then also just the best sneaker in general. Yeah. You know, because just the way the impact that he had. Yeah. Would you put, who would you put behind Mike? Behind Mike? Yeah. Penny. Penny behind I'll put Mike? him behind yeah, Penny, yeah. 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 It definitely ain't Shaq. His shoes ass. Oh man, Indeed, <laughs> his logo. Man. I don't know what's up with that, yeah. but it's like, but Shaq too. That's what I'm saying. Once you have a name out there, mm -hmm. you can drop anything. Yeah, come on now. Shaq had dropped some shoes that looked just like forces. Yeah, and he didn't even get sued for him because he was Shaq. So it's right. like, I mean, Shaq has some. Shaq has some cool shoes, affordable shoes too. Right. Yeah. But it's not payless. Yeah, they was at payless. Yeah, yeah. But it's too. like they not they not having the impact of of pennies. They not having the impact of Jordan. Who else had a good shoe? I'm not really, yeah, them, them really my top two. Like, yeah. yeah, I had Penny shoes, I had Jordan shoes. I really don't know another player shoe that I had, except LeBron. But yeah. LeBron was more team shoe. Yeah, it was like for actual It's not like, type yeah, shit. for actual hooping. It wasn't yeah. like a lifestyle shoe. So. Right. And it's crazy to think, since we were speaking of the movie, like just on The Last Dance, they mm -hmm. broke down like how Jordan got to Nike and whatnot. Yeah, and the I movie talks too. about it as well. I didn't see the movie. But mm -hmm. it's crazy to think that, you know, Converse and Adidas was like the top because Larry Bird and Mike was, uh, Magic Johnson were with Converse. Okay. So it's crazy to think how, like, imagine if Mike would have went with Converse. Yeah. That, it would have been different. It would it would have yeah. been weird because yeah. people would have still gravitated towards that. Yeah. But at the same time, Nike has just all Nike it has just always been superior. Perfect. In those brands. Yeah, it was, so it was the it, perfect. It made more sense. Yeah, yeah. It was it the perfect thing to do. Um, Your favorite Jordan number? 
My favorite Jordan number. Mm -hmm. I have to go with the twelves. The twelves. I have to go with the twelves. Like those are taxis and the cherries. And taxis, whatnot. the yeah. flu game. I'm gonna tell you. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you a story, man. Um, I had a pair of flu game twelves, and like I said, raised up in Memphis, there was a lot of bullshit going on. Mm -hmm. And I actually, um, somebody had actually set me up, right? And they had they actually tried to rob me, right? Mm -hmm. They tried to rob me for my money. They tried to rob me for my car. And come to find out, it was somebody that I knew, and I mm -hmm. found out. And basically, they stole. I didn't. They didn't get no money from me. They didn't get nothing else from me. But they got my shoes from me. Damn. And they was flu game twelve. One of my favorite shoes. Mm. And I, I need the motherfuckers back, bro. Yeah. Oh, Dude, just, oh, they never. I need the motherfuckers back. Yeah, bro. yeah. Because yeah. basically, he was he was my man. He set me up with some other people, bro. And it's like it, it's kind of fucked up. But because back in high school, bro, I ain't gonna lie. I was fucking everybody, bitch. Mm, so okay. that's kind of you was Mister Still Your Girl, and I and it really wasn't, and not even that because I kind of sometimes like the women, like sometimes I would already be be messing with them, mm -hmm. and I'd be done with them, then they go to another dude, uh -huh, but they, they still want that old. They thing still back. want me, and it's yeah. like no, like humbly, like for real, like I never really wanted get to get it. into that shit, but I it's like, it. I mean, that's just what happened. And they had set me up, and it, I feel like the guy that did set me up, he kind of he told me that, and he apologized, or whatever, and we ended up cool. But at the same time. I never knew the other people that was with him, but mm -hmm. I feel like the other people that was with him, you know, some of the girls, you know, yeah. but it's like, but at the end of the day, but like I said, I feel like one day, you know, when we, cause he doing real good too. The guy that, you know, set me up, he doing, um, I think he's doing, I don't know what he's doing, but he's doing real well on TikTok and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So one day we going to meet, but like I said, uh, uh, I'm gonna have to get them flu games back. Yeah, he needs to, them. <laughs> he gonna have to get that shit back because yeah. like I said, I look at it back. I look back at it now. Like I just didn't, you know, I didn't learn from it, but it's all yeah. good, man. It's all good. But flu game twelves, man. I, the taxi, I had the taxis. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, those are definitely my favorite shoes. Also, the fours. I love the bread fours. fours. They look, they so, they so smooth. They got the black cat fours too. I don't. know. They tax for them motherfuckers. They're like thousand mm. dollars just for some Damn. for some all black shoes. But but yeah, those fours and the twelves. Those are those are the best shoes. Also, the ones too. Yeah, ones. Like, is, ones I, I kind of be excluding ones from the list. Me personally, mm -hmm. I've never. Owned a pair of ones. I just used to sell them. I used to resell ones, but never had a pair for my own. Uh -huh. Fours is definitely top two on my list. I got the bread fours that came out in what was it like 2017, 18, somewhere uh -huh. around there, with the um suede. How do you feel about the fours coming out with the leather? The bread fours coming out with the leather. I'm not a big fan of the leather. Mm -hmm. I like the suede. Yeah. I, like, I, I like the suede because that's what really that's what really make the fours. That's what separate them from mm -hmm. the other shoes anyway. Um, well, I will give it that it'll be easier to clean. Yeah, you know I'm saying because yeah, the suede. But yeah, that's why you just be, I just barely wear my my yeah. uh, fours or the my fours. They came out with crazy colorways. Thund yeah. The thunder four, like with the yellow, look like some lightning. Yeah, yeah. And then they came out with lightning fours too. I guess was the what was the reverse mm -hmm. of the thunder. But I like the thunder fours more though. But yeah, Jordan man, they got yeah. they got some of the best sneakers out, man. I'd probably give it the fours and elevens. Yeah, I think elevens are, are fucking they're classics. comfortable too. And yeah. and those are ones that really those. The ones they make newer now, the elevens are better to hoop in. Cause mm. you got the high tops, they still cover the ankle. Yeah. And they they just more comfortable to hoop in. Right, right, right. Well, speaking of you said ones, um, you know, I did a little research on some of your uh your fits put together and whatnot on your IG and whatnot. And I noticed that you mm -hmm. have, you know, a, a good amount of ones. Mm -hmm. Also Air Force ones. Right. Rightfully so. You got oh, yeah. them on now. Yes, sir. I got black, white, mm -hmm. yeah, both of them. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you. Both energy. If you could only, ch <laughs> right? Yo, them fucking videos be so funny, man. <laughs> he be crazy. Yo, them shits be hilarious. So, Thanks. if you could only choose one mm -hmm. between Air Force ones or Air Jordan ones, what are you choosing? Definitely, definitely Jordan ones mm -hmm. because Jordan ones you definitely got more options to choose from. Yeah, um, I feel like with Force Air Force ones, you got like the collaborations. You got the Drake collaborations with the Air Force ones, the all whites. You got the Louis Vuitton Air Force Ones, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the Jordan ones just have way more colorways. Yeah. Like I said, I got I got black ones, I got white ones. I don't got the uh, I don't got no off white uh, Air Force Ones, but I'm definitely interested in getting some. But that's the only thing, really. You know, yeah. you got the black ones, you got the white ones, and you got the off white colorways. That's just you know that's sick. But at the same time, Jordan ones, you just got. It's like hundreds of Jordan ones. Yeah. So it's, it's just the versatility. That's the that's what I'm interested. In. What's your favorite Jordan one? My favorite Jordan one, I would say the bread ones. Even though I I haven't even had no bread ones, but just looking at them because the motherfuckers like what two racks. Yeah, I mean it's I can classic. get it, but I was like you know I'm it's, point. Yeah, yeah. it's no it's no point right there. I'm mm -hmm. re reinvesting all this money into my business, so I'm really spending my money wisely. But bread ones, those are definitely some of the best shoes. Even in, those Union ones too that they're coming out with, with the different colorway too. I like those too. But the bread ones, those are staples for real. 
Classics. Yeah. I fuck with it. I definitely need those. Yeah. So let's talk about Stud Studios for a second. Yep. Um, so how did you even come up with that? Mm -hmm. What's the style of it um, mm -hmm. in your own words? And even the name, where did that come from? So the name Stud Studios, I just kind of, you know, when you when you start a brand or when you start a business, the mm -hmm. name, you know, definitely is important. Um, so when I, I was just thinking of names to do and Stud just came across for me because I was thinking about you know, um, some people, you know, you stand up for what you believe in, mm -hmm. or I also brought the term, um, you stand up for people that can't stand up for themselves. So mm. I've always been like a, a type of person that kind of helps people. Um, even if I'm not always, you know, where I'm at, I kind of still want to help people give a shoulder to lead on. So yeah. that's why I also put like on my bags, on my new bags, I put Stood Studios for all people. So basically it's a streetwear brand and it's just, you know, it's available, you know, worldwide. I definitely try to promote it for all type of people, all type of different ages, backgrounds, no matter where you come from. Um, like I said, I got a saying, so today, tomorrow, and forever, I always stand up for what you believe in. So it's mm -hmm. just simple, you know. Some people, um, when you have a clothing brand, some people, they'll ask you, you know, why did you do it? You know, what's, you know, why did you make the name? Some people don't have a reason, but I got a reason, man. You definitely just do what you want to do um, and, and follow your dreams, man. So that's why I just stand up for what you believe in. Yep. When did you come up with it? This was like uh, over a, about a year and a half ago. Okay. So I, I celebrated a year back in February 14th. I dropped it on Valentine's Day. Nice. Yeah. I remember that. Okay. Yep. I remember that. I remember mm -hmm. that now. Nice. And that was kind of a thing too. So Valentine's Day, that's like a lover's day. So, mm -hmm. you know, about, you know, people being there, which are, you know, not necessarily being with a partner, but just love in general. Yeah. So, you know, that's why I promote it for all people, you know, love and just standing up for people. So that's how I came up with it. I fuck with it. So yeah. if someone, if um, someone were to just walk up to you. Uh -huh and ask you, Stood Studios clothing brand, mm -hmm. what type of style is it per se? Mm -hmm. How would you describe I it? I would say it's, like I said, it's modern modern streetwear. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I got the whole fit on right now. This just, I got some track pants, comfortable. And I got on this long, uh, long sleeve shirt. So it's definitely streetwear. Um, I got hoodies, I got shirts, hats. I'm gonna have some more shorts this summer. Uh, Mesh shorts was real popular back, you know, back mm -hmm. last year. Yeah. But this year I'm probably do some cotton shorts and but just the versatility of it, man. I, I like fashion. I, I might even create another brand. Yeah. Um, but I'm not gonna speak anything about that right now. But I definitely might do that, even with some friends. I got some close friends that I'm trying to put on. So I'm really I'm really all about helping people mm -hmm. and just, you know, going to the going to the next level. Like I said, it's always I mean, it's not always about the money, but definitely you definitely wanna if you if you have a passion for something, because Charlotte's expensive. Yeah, you know, really everywhere getting expensive nowadays. So it's God like damn. the money is important, but definitely having a passion for something. I feel like if you got a passion for something, or if you have, or if you have a talent, you definitely should pursue it. Yeah, and you for definitely sure. should pursue it, and don't stop. Don't stop till you get there, because if you stop, you'll never know where to. You'll yeah. never know where you can go. Yeah, you'll be on your deathbed living yeah. with regret. You'll That's never the last thing go. I want to do. Yeah, they they be like you know. What Drake said, if fuck being rich when I'm 40, I'm trying to make it now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to, now. I'm not trying to, you know, wait, especially with technology moving forward, man, you're going to get left behind. Yo, right, technology taking people's jobs and yeah, shit. Yeah, you, you're going to get left behind if you yeah. don't find something that, you, that you're interested in, that you're good in, or that, you're, that you have ambition. You, that's the big word. You got to have ambition mm. nowadays. I you like got to do something. So, Even if it's a regular job, nothing wrong with having a regular job. Yeah, nothing still, wrong with still being ambitious in that job exactly Cause you, you see leveling it. up because yeah cause think about it jobs the job that you choose is always levels to move up it, and it's so easy for mm -hmm. you see it all the time and i've been through it i'm pretty sure you've been through it as well right. it's a job you a job you applying for you mm -hmm. really want it you like yo i really want mm -hmm. this job not even need it you may need it too but you're like yo i just will really be set up perfect if i get this job yeah you get the job you go hard for like a month and then after that you become complacent yeah right you so, don't want to ever get complacent yeah and that's real easy to do mm -hmm. and then like you may have someone who comes into that job um down the road who's moving up in uh -huh. the in the on the ladder quicker than you and you're like damn like i've been here long you gotta get to it then yeah you gotta get to it exactly you gotta be ambitious yeah you gotta ask yourself have you really been getting to it have mm -hmm. you been ambitious or have you been taking have you been working on eight hour work days have you only been working four hours exactly you know what taking I mean? it easy yeah yeah you gotta so. you gotta keep going Definitely mm -hmm. gotta keep going. So with your um with your actual pieces of clothing and whatnot, mm -hmm. um, they're very 
the design is on point. Like even mm. what you're wearing right now, like, yeah, I appreciate it. That shit is on point. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Again, I'm so far fetched from that. Like I'm mm-hmm. Nike. You know what I'm saying? Right, like right. which is very basic. Mm-hmm. But with yours, that takes creativity. That mm-hmm. takes thought. That takes imagination. Exactly. So like, how do you, when it comes to creating actual articles of mm-hmm. clothing, like how do you even come up with that? Where does that come from? Yeah. So basically, some of the designs um, that's not like obviously too complex. Mm-hmm. I kind of make the stuff myself. Like these pants. I created them, you know, I created them myself. I didn't actually hand make them. Yeah. But like I said, as far as design, I got two S's going down the side. and just got Stud Studios, my name. But like with the shirt, sometimes you got to hire designers to kind of help out with yeah. the main design. But when you when you give somebody an idea, they kind of just go from there. So basically, we just it's a collaboration type thing. Okay. And just like any job. So yeah. the owner of Nike is not designing the clothes, yeah, right? Yeah. So you got you got to have people in position. You got to have a team. And yeah. so that's what I have. I have a team. I have a, a, a team of designers, a team of, you know, marketers kind of help me out with my marketing. So that's the big thing as far as a business wise. You you could start by yourself, in which I did, mm-hmm. but you still have to have a team, you know, yeah. that, that has, that puts stuff in place. So what do you look for in your team? Uh-huh. Um, same thing that I have ambition, you know, you got to have also talent. Um, you gotta, you gotta know what you're doing. You gotta, you gotta be ambitious. You have to, you you just have to, you know, like I said, you have to be good at what you do. So like I said, mm-hmm. the people that, the people that I allow to help me design my clothes, um, I'm not necessarily, you know, very close with them, but I know exactly how, you know, what I want from them. So yeah. they, and they kind of, they, they kind of help me out with that. So you just got to make sure you pick the right team. Always nice, nice. I like it. Yeah. Um, so even if you do, you know, start off by yourself, mm. at some point, just getting that team will help take it over to that next level. Oh, you can't do nothing by yourself ever. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously you can, but I'm talking about as far as taking it, building to that, a business, the yeah, whole way scaling, through. and that's yeah. what that's definitely I'm in the process now, man. I'm definitely in the process of scaling my business, getting into the next level. Mm-hmm. And once you do that, you gotta have a team. You gotta have a team to fall back on. You yeah. can't do it. Can't do it all yourself when it when it gets this big. Cause like I said last year, we've we've grown so much from last year. Mm-hmm. So it's like I definitely gotta definitely gotta keep you know hiring a little bit people on the side to get me to that next level to get yeah. us to that next level. Right. You know what I'm saying. So I like that. I like how you said us. Yeah. Um. So overall, what would you say are some keys to a successful clothing brand in general? Cause mm-hmm. I've personally witnessed plenty of people right. who say, "Hey, I got a clothing line out." Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Then a month later, they're gone. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? So what are some keys uh, with you, you know, with mm-hmm. Stood Studios and yourself, what are some keys you would say to a successful clothing brand? Yeah. First of all, like you said, you got to be in it for the long run. You can't just you can't just drop something and people are not fucking with it and then you just, you give up. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep going. You got to figure out what people, you got to figure out what people like. You got to figure out what people don't like. So it's just a matter of, you know, it's just a matter of time. You know, you just got to, if you're if you're ambitious, if you're good at what you're doing, I mean the sky's the limit, man. You got to just keep going. Mm. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Straight to the point. Yeah, I like that. Um, let me ask you this: Could you date a girl that didn't have a sense of style, like just completely, Damn. completely thrown off? It's one thing to kind of be like, okay, like dress how you like, be comfortable. Right. With, but I mean, if it's just and not if it's as. I ain't gonna lie. I'm. I can't even. I wouldn't even approach approach her. Cause that's uh, that's another thing too about me. Like, if I'm out and about, I'm not really the type of guy to approach women anyway. Cause sometimes I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes it, I mean it just gravitates. You're, you're like also too. Like you know that look. Sometimes you be in a club and you see it. And you see a fine shorty or she see you. Y'all lock eyes. That's kind of just does it for me. You know what I'm saying? You know. You know when you in there. But as far as style goes, I feel like style is not really. 100% that important to mm-hmm. me, but at the same time, you can't be just out here looking, you know what I'm saying? You can't yeah. be just out here really looking like a mess. You can't be doing that. You got to have your hair right. Mm-hmm. You got to have your hygiene well, she, she, right. Hy- hygiene, hair right. Every, yeah. Everything hygiene, everything is on point. Uh-huh. And even the first time you saw her, right. when you bagged her, she uh-huh. had on a sweatsuit. She was chilling. Yeah. Uh-huh. But then come to find out, y'all as y'all out. start stepping out, you're like, oh. That shit don't match. Shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, nah, but that's the thing, though, because, no, nah, no, nah, I, I wouldn't have a problem with that because- since simply because I'm um, like I said, I kind of know I'm not I'm not the best I'm not the best fashion icon there is. Yeah. But I'm just saying I kind of know a little bit about fashion to where if that's my lady, I can definitely help her. Put you know on. what I'm saying? And I feel like if I'm her dude, she gonna respect me enough to allow yeah. me to help her. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's not like, oh yeah, what you got on? I can't fuck with you. Yeah. No, yeah, no. Yeah. but if you really fucking with a shorty, 
you you can help her out and vice yeah. versa. Okay, you know and she will respect it. Exactly. Um, do y'all clown Uspa like when you came up in Memphis? Uh, like, does I'm y'all tripping. clown Uspa? They definitely did. Yeah. Memphis, that's the one thing. Like we used to call it. You know, it's different. It's different things in different cities. Yeah. But we used to call it checking. Checking. Okay. So that's like if you know you just check somebody, you talk about their clothes, you yeah, talk about their yeah, shoes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, USPA. If you was rocking that instead of Ralph Lauren. They would be on your ass from sun up to sundown. They'd be over with the whole, the whole period. Like, and that's another thing, bro. Memphis, it was too. They had too much of that shit going on in high school, mm. man. Always checking, always yeah. playing around. And that's what I'm saying. I used to always play around too. My mom used to hate that shit. She was like, "Cameron, you always playing." Yeah. But I feel like once I went to college, I, I just got more mature about life. Yeah, because you absolutely. have to. You have absolutely, to. yeah. You I definitely got much more mature. I start thinking about business. I start thinking about long term. Mm-hmm. I start thinking about family. I start thinking about shit that's more important because really that shit hit me. Yeah, like I said, high school don't really, it don't really teach you. It teach you. Uh, you go to work. You, I mean, you go to school every day, and then you get a job after you graduate yeah. and you just live life. But that's not. It ain't. It ain't as easy as that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, yeah. You I, definitely gotta you definitely gotta know what you're doing. Yeah, and plus when you got to college, that's why you that's like when you mm-hmm. wore anything to class, like right. you wear yeah, slides, so yeah, whatever comfy. type shit. And, and you like not, I ain't worried about that shit. Yeah, that's another thing too. You were saying that you, you like to be comfortable mm-hmm. and that's cool because like I said style, I mean it's definitely subjective. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wear what you wanna wear, wear what you're comfortable in. Mm-hmm. Um and that's another thing too. I always like depending on where I'm going, I like to match. I like not necessarily match my clothes, but I like the I like to put myself in that in that situation. Yeah. Like basically what I'm saying is I can't go to the grocery store dripped out. It's yeah. like, what's the point? You right. see what I'm saying? Nobody, you're not, I mean, you might see a, a couple shorties in there. Like, yeah, you yeah. might see something you like, but it's like, it's no point of, and that's what you see too in these, um, in the fashion industry nowadays, you look at those reels and TikToks, mm-hmm. you see these fashion motherfuckers going different, like going to the library and shit. Yeah. Dripped out. It's like, yeah. that shit for me is uncomfortable. But like I said, style subjective, do what the fuck you want to do. Right. But you know, for me, I, I like to be comfortable. And now if it's a particular event, like if it's a fashion show, then you got to get, you know, fully yeah. dripped out. Oh, yeah, of course. Just being comfortable, is, that's the most important thing for me too when it comes to fashion. Yeah. And yeah. speaking of grocery store, you said our grocery store. I'm going to say this about these Charlotte grocery stores, uh-huh. man. That's the, that should be hotter than some some let outs. The Walmarts and yeah. Publix, especially Publix. Uh-huh. Whole Foods is cool, but they're a little more on the hippie side of Whole Foods. But these Harris Teeters, that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. Harris Teeters and Publix out here in Charlotte. Right. Them motherfuckers are open bar. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> they got bars in, in those. It's, yeah, a, it's yeah. like a spot. It's like an after work spot you go yeah. to. Yo. Yeah. Easily, mm-hmm. like high quality. Mm, Chef Kip's joint. If you bore, yeah. If you bore, hey, man. Let's go to Harris Teeter. Harris go to fucking Teeter. Go grab a drink, get mm-hmm. you a sandwich. They got the good food, and they be having them. They be in there. They be in there. And you said you don't. You you know it's crazy. You said earlier mm-hmm. like you don't really mm-hmm. go smack at. Well, that's how we say back home. Like going smack or like approach mm-hmm. like a bag and yeah, touch yeah. to try to bag something. It's very rare. It's very rare for me to do that. I it's feel like it's because you're a sniper. Yeah, yeah. I know a sniper yeah. when I see a sniper. Yeah. I'm a I'm a fellow sniper as well. <laughs> you're a, you're an American sniper. Yeah. I get it, and I I be on the same type it's, of time. It's hard out here, man. Yo, I be telling people like, yo, I don't got game. I really don't. What but what I do got. Uh-huh. Is conversation, and I know how to. Shouldn't be saying this, but I know how to use the psyche for my advantage. Right. Like if I know, I, you can sense when a girl feeling you. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. That eye contact. Yeah, oh, that's man, what I, really the blows. eyes, Chico. They say especially it all. they, especially. In, I ain't gonna say it's a difference, but like I said, Charlotte and like Memphis, it, it's it's a difference, man. Because mm. the Memphis women, they hard. You know mm. what I'm saying? They they kind of, some of them act like dude, so it's like. Okay. I mean, they kind of they real aggressive, and ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, women are gonna be women. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's eight billion people in the world. Everybody different. Yeah. But like I said, just making that eye contact, that's that that'll do it for me. Absolutely. Especially if you like beautiful. Yeah. And like, I, I'm not saying I don't approach women at all, but it, it just got it got to take a lot for yeah. me to approach a woman. But if I'm she, not if approaching she, a random girl that right. just, that's decent. But when she lays out that red carpet with the eyes, yeah. then that's that. She honest, looking good. That, yeah. Don't that, that's the best shit, man. Look, you that's already know the what's best up. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> You already know what's up. That you makes, gotta approach that at that point. Otherwise, yeah. you, you just you you gonna go home and you be like, damn, I should have did that, bro. When she did this. when she nah, when, nigga, it's too late. When she <laughs> shoot her shot by not shooting her shot, 
Yeah. By giving you that look, that is the best shit. That should make you want to lace your boots. Yeah. You're like, all right, bet. You yeah, got to go ahead yeah. and do it. Because uh-huh. at that point, it's the instant yes anyway. Uh, exactly. Like, what the fuck is you waiting on? Yeah, you just at can't, that point, you you just can't say nothing goofy or corny. And then exactly. she'll be like, uh, what the fuck? Yeah, you, you weird ass nigga. Yeah, all you got to do is be on some cool shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Be be on some be on some um what's the word? Have a sense of humor, but don't be too fucking yeah, don't goofy be, don't with be it. Doing too much. You know what I'm saying? And don't be too press about her. That's the thing too. Looks is one thing, mm-hmm. but as soon as you approach a woman, or as soon as a woman approach a dude, it's like that personality do matter too. Hundred percent. Personality is definitely the 100%. way you act is definitely important. I be telling I be telling my man, so I ain't gonna put them out there, but his ability to open is remarkable. Uh-huh. Like his ability to approach. Oh yeah, just a I had chick. a couple of people like that too. It's wild. Yeah, but his closing <laughs> skills are ass. Damn. Because he he be too press about her. Right. I'm like, bro, you be Gotta too calm down. press about her, bro. They niggas be thinking, oh yo, oh, because uh, uh, girls be tweeting about it. I want a nigga that's uh, pressed about me. Right. They do not really want that shit. They <laughs> capping. If you press, it just depend on a woman too, though. Yeah, that depends. too, that too, that too. Like if it's really a joint that's really just like way ducked off out the way, mm-hmm. and you can really be pressed about and have it reciprocated, cool. But from it definitely, yeah. Depends. For the most part, like yeah, if you too press, you can feel pressed about her. Mm-hmm. But if you show it to the furthest extent, you're just gonna push her right yeah, away. You can't definitely do the most, man. They're not gonna, they're not gonna rock with it. Hell nah. All right. So speaking on this topic, before we get out of here, I got a couple questions. Uh-huh. Day by day is an open platform. Okay. Let's see what we got. I gotta be careful though. In the yeah, 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 out. yeah. Tread lightly, tread <laughs> lightly. And some of these may be retor- may, some of these may be uh, hypothetical. Mm. Let's go ahead and put that out there right that's now. That's a very good. That's a yeah. very good word. Yes. Hypothetical. Some of these may be hypothetical. So you know what I'm saying if yeah. a certain lady tuning in is all right. <laughs> all right. First off, we have what's more important if you could only choose one. All right. Only one. Bomb ass head uh-huh. or bomb ass box. Definitely say the box. Yeah, always. I'm going ahead because the head you can you can you can still teach her. You know what I'm saying? Longevity. You can't teach her. No, 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 no. Teach her. Only one. You can't. You can't. Uh, you, nah, I can't even. Nah, I can't nah, even nah. mention nope. it. Nope. It's only one. You can only choose one. Ain't no teaching. Definitely, definitely that. Yeah, definitely the box. Box. Why not? Because you can't have. I can't. You can't be out here dry. And that's another thing too. That it definitely depends on how the woman is feeling you as well. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So. As far as what the box of the mouth, both, or both? yeah, both. cause ain't nothing like a girl that that's feeling you, yeah, that, yeah. Get, that really is into you and gets turned exactly. on by giving you head, yeah. She what? She gonna go crazy? That's the most dangerous. You gonna be man talking to through it? You gonna be talking through it? She gonna go crazy, and that's the best part about it. It's like yeah, yeah you, you really are a sniper. You say you talk her through it, yeah, you really I mean, is a sniper. I, mean, I, don't know. I already, yeah, I already know it. Communication is very important. Yeah, bro, I be you telling know. people, I be telling people, yo, important. when you talk her through, when you talk nasty and talk her through uh-huh. that shit, give some type of instruction behind that shit and just a, a slight tad bit of disrespect in that she love that shit <laughs> hey this nigga freaky she love <laughs> so freaky ass nigga she love bro I'm gonna go with the mouth though yeah I'm gonna go with the mouth I'm like cause you know sometimes yo it's like it could be a long ass day you dead fucking tired yeah and then she just put that mouth on you just Lay back and just let it happen. And you, yeah, you feel like you on cloud nine. And it can happen anywhere. Especially if she going crazy. If she going crazy. And it can happen anywhere for two. Yeah. And now, don't get me wrong. Like, I've... I've fuck it. Like I said, it's an open platform. I've, <laughs> I've busted in some joint sushi and like that feeling right. is remarkable. Uh-huh. But like having a mouth, like when she topping you and you bust and she's still going. Yeah. And like getting every drop out, that shit is euphoric. Yeah, she she definitely definitely that's different. That's a different type of experience. That's but I feel like too. But I don't know, man. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to combat that too and just tell you just the just the pussy though. It's just a different. It's a different it feeling. Is. It is. It's a different feeling. It's a different, especially with all the different type of emo. I don't know, man. It is. It like is. I that, said, you can't get too deep into it, but it's like that thing is you can get deep into it. Yeah, and that's what I I'm looking at. But that's what I fuck with though. Like women in general, and but both. Like I said, you said I can't mention both, but yeah, damn. Just one. Just one. That means you can it's only like, pick one and the other one's going to be trash. Damn. Yep. But like I said, over time, she'll be able to work with you. How do you, um, how do you tell a woman that she has trash head? You don't. You don't. This but, fucking guy right here is so on point. You don't y'all. tell her because, first of all, 
she's gonna get insecure, or it just depends on the woman though. Yeah, she's gonna get insecure. If you do, um, it has to be after, way yeah, after yeah. the fact. She's gonna, have, and she's you, gonna catch your attitude. Yeah, you don't just straight up say it was trash. You just gotta be like, hey, yeah. try this next time. Yeah, what? No, 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 not next time. We trying this shit now. <laughs> so basically, with me is like I said, communication is so important. That's what I learned over time. Like, motherfuckers, when you was 18, 19, you really wasn't communicating. You really wasn't communicating. You was just sex. fucking the fuck. You was just you was humping just, both hump. ways. The woman and the and mm -hmm. the dude. So you just. There was no communication of what this so and so like. So yeah. that's why I said once you get older, communication is very important. Mm -hmm. Tell the motherfucker what you want. Tell the motherfucker how you do this too. And sometimes women don't do that with men. A lot of times. A lot of times. They be like, most, they, I yeah. hate I hate when women be like, Y'all yeah. niggas don't know how to eat pussy. Da, right. da, da. Are you teaching the yeah. nigga that you Cause some cause some people they they just don't know how. Yeah. They don't, don't know don't know how because no woman ever told them. It ain't right. like they, it ain't like well some people do it. But like I said, I just learned based off experience. Mm -hmm. But it's like some people shit, if you if you don't know how to do this shit, they'll rather than asking the woman, they'll mm -hmm. go Google the shit. Yeah. You know, which you can do that too, but at yeah. the same time, you experience is a big experience and communication. Yeah. That's Def that's just the main thing. You definitely gotta communicate with a motherfucker what you want mm -hmm. and then You'll get that shit. If you don't ask, you won't receive. That's that's how I think about so it. So right then and on the spot, you're dealing with a shorty. It's her first time of giving you head and it's mm -hmm. awful. What are you doing right there? So basically I'm definitely telling her I'm telling her what to do. Okay. Right down point. Yeah. I'm I'm telling her what to do. Okay. In a nice way. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm for sure. I'm not I'm not like you said, she said you got trash here, what you doing. Good. I'm not telling her it's trash. <laughs> I'm gonna just tell her, hey, you know, so and so, you know what I'm saying? Is she on the balls and, and she sucking to her? Hey, slow down. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. Sensitive. sensitive as fuck. You know what I'm I had God to say that shit damn. recently. So it's like, ah, right, damn. So you definitely gotta communicate. Otherwise, a heavy ball gobbler. That shit is not fun, nah, ladies. Yeah, it's, it's not it's fun. fun. This shit is not a. This shit is not a heavy ass milkshake. You sipping out the straw. You gotta right. slow down. Jesus, <laughs> bro. Our fucking that makes our stomach hurt, bro. For real, that shit be sensitive. Y'all got it. That's what I'm saying. But that's why I say communication. Okay. Some niggas are just. <clears throat> Make a like a bitch would be biting your shit and they're just wood, they're trying to take wood it. I'd be like, hell no! Nah. I'd be like, look, uh, sweetheart, you first of all, you look beautiful right now. What you doing, but <laughs> but like, that's dangerous. <laughs> but you are gonna have to, you know, what I'm saying you are gonna have to settle down with the teeth. You know yeah, what I'm saying? you bite me. Oh, she like, oh okay. Yeah, but communication. That's on point. That's I've been on. I've been on both sides of the both sides of the spectrum. I've been yeah. on one side where I ain't say nothing, but I didn't just go through it. I I used to play it off like. All right, nah, nah, this shit too good. Come on, let's let's get to it. You right. know what I'm saying? Like I'd be like, all right, fuck the head. It's too good. The whole time that shit, she was scraping my shit. Yeah, trash. Like a wood scrape. Yeah. And then I've been on, I've been on the other side too. I'd be like, all right, yo, this the teeth, the teeth is getting me. But they yeah. actually, when you like you said, when you calm, cool about it, uh -huh. they actually appreciate that. Of shit. course. Because at the end of the day, like you said, it comes down to a shorty that really want to pleasure you. Ain't mm -hmm. nothing like that shit, yeah. man. And definitely that'll help her too. Mm -hmm. That'll help her too. Like seeing you communicate, that'll help her communicate on her side too and telling her what she want. Mm -hmm. Cause that's really that's really the big thing, but communication. Mm -hmm. Second question, speaking of it, since we were talking about it, mm -hmm. uh, the gooch, do you fuck with the gooch? Do I fuck with the gooch? I ain't really, to do, be honest. Do you rock Gucci? <laughs> do I rock Gucci? To be honest, man, the women, some type, of, some of the women that I've been with, they really, they really just haven't done that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I well, really not, not every not every chick is out there. Yeah, so I really the haven't even had that type of type of situation going on. So it's she like, got to be tight. She got to be part animal to fuck with the. Yeah, goose. yeah, yeah. She got to she got to be crazy. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? not crazy, but she got to be. She got to be a freak. Like yeah, she she got to be, be part animal. Like yeah, not every so chick. So I really, yeah. to be honest, I really never even got this shit done to me before. Now yeah. that I think about it, I haven't. I fuck with so the clearly, I, I about to say yeah. clearly, this nigga. Yeah, I'm, fuck with it. I'm Gucci. I'm Gucci man. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it. This nigga. Yeah, he. I'm yeah. pretty sure yeah. Top top half though. Yeah. Okay. Top half. Yeah. Cause you know the Gooch is a it's a it's a it's a decent space. Yeah. Top half though. Like don't bottom half, what are you doing, Shorty? Right. This ain't that type of party. Yeah, yeah, you getting too close. Yeah, I ain't too I ain't far. I ain't fucking with that. And yeah. live your truth, cause there's some I, there's some niggas out here that rock with that right. shit. Yeah, it, it really is. I, I don't. I ain't I ain't I ain't I ain't, nah, I ain't it, drove down that road yet. I'm good. But the top half <laughs> of the Gooch, yeah, yeah, I'm rocking the Gucci belt. Yeah, because I rather like when the when Shorty just when Shorty just stroking that motherfucker, mm -hmm. and she she sucking the ball at the same time, that's my favorite shit right there. I ain't gonna lie. Oh, you don't even gotta do man. nothing with the goose. You don't even got you don't even gotta suck that motherfucker. That just is take fucking your hand dangerous. And just suck the balls right, and you be straight. And that's the one thing about some women. Some women they forget about those little love sex. Down. Yeah, yeah. Like, don't spend all day on them. Don't spend all day on them. Don't but, spend all day on nothing. That's another thing too. Don't spend all day on them. How you, how would you feel exactly they don't if like your man was all day on one position? You know what I'm saying? Visit like, them. You gotta switch visit, it up. You gotta visit the kids. Communicate. Sometime. 
Communicate with your mans. Bro, I had a joint. First off, yeah, that combo is dangerous. The 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 stroke and ball joint, that is fucking dangerous Man. From, from a woman. I had a joint. I've only had one shorty to do this. I call her Head Monster. Damn, she, she got a name. That's the name of the phone. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't seen her in Crazy. a couple years because she out in New York, and yeah. she don't even know that that's her nickname. But, yo, okay. this the only joint to do this, right? She she a, she a thick joint, thick thick. Uh -huh. Like she 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 ain't no ain't no chicken wing. She ain't no she ain't none of that. Yeah, no flat so, back. Nah. Okay. Yo, she would take my dick and balls and put them all. She, her, her jaws were like extended where she could <sighs> open up like a fucking shark. I've been saying shark bite. God, and she damn. would put all three in a fucking mouth, bro. <laughs> all three of them. Bitch. The only person the only person that's ever well, done that to this type day. Of nigga you? This nigga free. To this day, you I ain't been in New York in a couple years, yeah. but you best believe next time I go out there, I'm hollering at them. When they put the whole thing in that motherfucker, and they start, they got the tongue, and they just looking at the, man, look, I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have you, to call a shorty when I get off. Man. You, 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 like, you like when she look at you during? Yeah. So basically, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, You don't got to look at me the whole time, because mm -hmm. even then, like, cause think about it. When we go down on a woman, yeah. we'll look at her, we'll look away, we'll mm -hmm. focus yeah, on yeah, what yeah. we're doing. But yeah. it's like, yeah, you don't got to look at me the whole time. Yeah. But just definitely let me see how, yeah, let me see yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. That shit yeah. is, it's a very intimate yeah. moment when a shorty Because pretty is, women, I mess. I only mess with pretty women. So it's like, I'm, saying. And I'm, got, a, I'm not messing with nothing. I'm not mm -hmm. messing with, so basically, if you hear this right now, if you know I knocked you down, you know you want a beautiful scare in the world. There you right? go. Make her feel good about it. Let me stop it. Let me stop it. Nah, we on it, motherfucking. <laughs> and I'm a sucker for pretty eyes. Like, that's oh, my yeah, thing. Yeah. Like, my favorite pretty feature eyes. on a woman mm -hmm. is her eyes and her lips. Yeah. So if a shorty pretty and got pretty lips eyes crazy. and look up at me and we make that little intimate connection, yeah. man, I might be in and trouble. And it don't got to be the eye color. It can just, it just got yeah. it can just be the eyes. That you sparkle. Gotta, yeah, yeah. Man, the sparkle that fucking eyes. sparkle. That shit, you can't beat that. You know what's crazy? I ain't gonna lie. Like when I was a young and like I didn't like when Shorty would look at me. Like I would yeah. get like kind of nervous. nervous. Yeah, you know what I'm that's saying. That's why I said that's what thing. It just, it just, yeah. just growth. I used to look away. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Pretend like I'm Stevie Wonder and Bad. shit, and look up and do all this. Like I fuck with it now though. But yeah, you got definitely that shit. When a woman, when a woman looking at you mm -hmm. and doing that shit, that shit just make the ten times better. <sighs> definitely ten times better. Chef's kiss. Yeah, it's even like. Even like if I'm on a bitch in missionary and we just we locked in, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna lie, I'd be off the liquor. Oh man, if it's... I'm fucking off the liquor, bro, we we finna be in for a long yeah. night. It's a movie. We finna be in for a long mm -hmm. night, like for real. What's your go-to liquor to really dicker? Oh, tequila, 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 cause it, it gets you there. It gets you there the fastest. Yeah. It do do the fastest. And also, tequila just always been my go-to anyway. So okay. I just feel like. That's one of the that's one of the you know liquors that just kind of play it safe with. Yeah. If I go with anything else, I might be too maybe too fucked up. Like I don't drink Hennessy and none of that shit. Like first mm -hmm. of all, Hennessy is nasty. So yeah. I mean, that's just my opinion. But well, let me say this as a as a Henny advocate, nah, how you nah, are shit. with tequila, that's me with. Okay, Henny. so that's why I said yeah. So yeah. There's different taste. So yeah, I'm on the opposite end of the yeah. spectrum. I'm gonna say this about the taste of Henny. Yes, Henny, mm -hmm. I can say full full heartedly, Henny tastes disgusting. For real. As a true Henny taster, it is disgusting. Yeah. But okay. I'm glad that you. I'm glad you say that because like I said this shit is nasty. Yeah, but, but some it gets people, you there. Some it gets you there. And some people mm -hmm. be capping. They think Henny is the best shit. They right. think it tastes like iced tea. No, if someone say yeah. Henny ain't disgusting, they're not a real Henny drinker. Yeah, I fuck with Henny. The the taste is disgusting, but mm -hmm. for me, it's where Henny gets me. Right. Nowhere, nothing else gets me where Henny gets me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anything tequila, is possible. They get you there. Anything. Tequila, I, I'm cool with it, but mm -hmm. it sneaks up on me. Anything white for me, it's it's, it's going to sneak me. Yeah. Out of out of left field. Henny, Sheesh. yeah, that, that's it. How you are with tequila? That's me with Henny. Yeah, tequila. Yeah. I got, I got a few favorites. I got a few favorites. I got Casamigos, definitely, mm. you know, on the list. But I'm not the type of people. I'm not the type of person to just go with the trend either. I, I found this new tequila. It's called Corzo. It's in a nice little bottle, man. That shit is so smooth. Corzo, it sounds my familiar. man. My man puts me on. My man Tino put me on, man. That shit is a. It's a beautiful tequila. I like. I, I like Reposado, but as okay. far as Blanco, I mean, you can Blanco, you you can mix that shit with anything. Yeah, I mix with yeah. uh, pineapple juice, orange juice. Yeah. So, but like I said, when you're taking straight shots too, though, it's not, it's not. It's one thing about tequila; it's not really nasty. Mm -hmm. That shit just strong as a yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, very so, strong. That yeah, shit it burn. Should, it should get you there. But it, it, it's there. weird because it's it doesn't have the sugar that Henny and all these other yeah. shits got, which is actually better for you. Yeah, healthier. That's what they say. Tequila is healthier. It's healthier, for you. bro. Yeah. I, I I like to jog like mm -hmm. for like a good minute. 
And a couple years ago, like it was this jog I did around my neighborhood. It was three miles every time. Mm -hmm. And one time, it was my mom's birthday, so we taking shots. I took like three shots of tequila, the three or four, then went for my jog uh -huh. and had a PR best time. Damn. Off the tequila. That's shit. what I'm saying. That shit get you in motion. Yeah, shit was crazy. It definitely get you there. Yeah, I definitely couldn't do that shit off. Definitely the get you there. So yeah. tequila and fucking Hennessy, man. Tequila and but like I said, I, I had to go with tequila all day. I fuck with it. So before we get out of here, I do got one final question for you to kind of bring everything full circle. You being a design and fashion enthusiast and whatnot, and um, you know, you having a, uh, the clothing brand that's doing numbers and is going to do way more numbers. For sure. I got one question for you. If you could pick anybody on God's green earth to have a fashion collab with, who are you choosing and why? A fashion collab? As far as brands? Mm hmm Hmm... Or yeah, brand or um like uh how um what's it called? Like uh Beyonce did with the Adidas shit and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So it can be a brand or a person. Okay. A brand or a person. Man, y'all gonna hate me for this, man. But I say for the person, Kanye. You know, um it's you know, he got a lot he got a lot of shit going on, but at the same time when it comes to fashion, and I'm not gonna say all his shit is hard. I'm not gonna say mm -hmm. you know, cause sometimes Kanye be having some terrible clothes, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like the way he, the, what he wears. But as far as like a fashion designer and just the connections he has, I feel like that'll be a big, a big collaboration. And also, as far as brand, Louis Vuitton, mm -hmm. Louis Vuitton. Louis. I feel like their logo yeah. has just always just been, you know, an eye, you know, eye opening, eye opening for me. I'm not really, I'm not really big into uh, designer brands except that brand. Yeah. to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Louis Vuitton got so they're so versatile yeah. with their pieces. Yeah. So, you know, spring, summer, fall, winter. They always bring in, always bring, especially their collaborations too. They always got collaborations going mm -hmm. on with the celebrities and stuff like that. So definitely, man, Louis Vuitton is one of the was one of the best brands that I feel like I want to work on. Also, um, there's a small time. Nah, I'm not even, even gonna say small time designer. He's he's definitely doing well in the game right now. His name is Blue. Um, okay, it's called Blue Boy. I would definitely want to collab with him one day. He's been doing crazy in the game. He's collab with um, True Religion. He's collab with other brands, so he's doing real good in the game, and that's that's one time, that's one guy I think I've collab with too as well. Nice. So we got Yay, we got Louie, and we got Blue. Yeah, I yeah. fuck with it. I fuck they, with they it. They got some hard stuff coming out, and I I, I definitely love it. I love it. Nice. Yep. All right. So let's um before we get out of here, let the people know mm -hmm. um what's to come. You know what I'm saying, and where they can find it, and, and yeah. what to look forward to, and whatnot. For sure, for sure. Like I said, um, we gonna have some shorts and more shirts that's coming out this spring and summer. Like I said, you can follow us on uh, Instagram at Stood Up for You. Um, that's S T W O D U P, the number four, and the letter U. And same thing with the website, StoodUpForYou.com. Um, and same thing with TikTok, Stood Up for You. So we definitely out on all platforms. We doing numbers. Uh, we open up to collaborations if you guys are interested, but make sure your shit come hard. Mm -hmm. You know, but like I said, that's what we got for you. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go crazy this summer, man, for real. We definitely I'll be I'll definitely be back, man. I'll definitely be back. Nice and I'm out day. Appreciate that, bro. Yep. Yeah, and I'm gonna tag um I'm gonna provide all the links to his social medias mm -hmm. and website yep. in the um in the description of the show so that where you can find it yep. right there. And again, man, I appreciate you for you know what I'm saying stopping by the stew. Still yep. gotta come up with a name. And you know what I'm saying? Having great convo. For sure. Yeah, I appreciate you for having me, man. It yeah. was a long time. We should have been doing it, but we, you know, I'm glad we did. We didn't rush it and we we in there, man. We're gonna be locked in for sure. It was perfect timing because yeah. we got, I got the studio, sure. you know what I'm saying? You was able to, you know, better build. And you even mm -hmm. said that. You wanted to, you know what I'm saying, get things exactly. kind of, you know, moving forward a little more. And that's exactly mm -hmm. what you did. Exactly. So I I'm I'm glad that it took longer because we're literally mm -hmm. two people that uh, spoke things into existence as far as exactly. elevating our brand. Manifestation, that's the big thing, man. Huge. Definitely. And that's what we both did and it mm -hmm. both met and that's why I look and sound, you know yeah. what I'm saying, how it is and that's why this shit came out how it is. The exactly. vibes was on point because that's what we're that's what We're going to continue to manifest it too, man. Yeah. We got to do some, we're going to do some big things in the city. Yeah. Um, even Absolutely. even giving back, you know, like I said, yeah. standing up for what we believe mm -hmm. in, standing up for what we do, man. So yeah. we're going to keep it going. Yeah, Charlotte is waiting. Yeah. Um, what, you, what you getting into today and, and, and for tomorrow? You, man, you I'm not city? really, I'm not really doing much. Yeah. Like I said, I got a, I got a couple, you know, chill days. I still got to, you know, probably still, you know, promote this Memorial Day sale and yeah. stuff going on with the business. But, you know, edit a couple videos, send a couple packages out. Yeah. 
But you know how that go, man. Yeah, I've been Keep editing going. all weekend. I'm going to edit for like an hour after this. And I told my man, like, yo, I got to hit the streets. Yeah. Uh, I just got to get some air. I'm back itching. Into it. Yeah, I got yeah. to do something. I've been in this month. But like, oh, what's today? Sunday oh, night. So if it stopped raining, I might I might pop out. Might, yeah, it, it looked like it's decent from the blinds. Yeah. I can't see behind. But yeah. It might pop out. Uh, yeah. Well, listen, everyone that's tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube mm-hmm. or listening on your respective podcast platform, by the way, this sure. is on Every podcast platform, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast, Day by Day Podcast is there if you want to tune into the audio part. If you are tuning on to the audio, make sure that you check out the visuals on YouTube. It's a great vibe. I truly thank y'all from the bottom of my heart for tuning in. I just ask that y'all do one of two things, if not two of the, two of two things, to like and subscribe and share it out. Three things. Share it sure. out too. If you fuck with it, go ahead and send it to somebody so they can check it out too. It's all about growth, man. I really appreciate y'all again. Um, but until next time, I got to thank again my boy Cam for stopping by. Appreciate you, You man. know what I'm saying? Uh, providing this great conversation and content. And everyone that's tuning in, until next time, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace. Of course.